kingdom, greetings to us all. I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to take this time to honor our parents, uh, Professor E.H. and Dr. Yuna Guti. Uh, I thank you, Mom and Dad, for giving me this opportunity to share the Word of God. Um, today I'm going to be sharing with us on a topic that our father, Professor E.H. Guti, has been sharing for the past decades, which is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And our key scripture is going to come from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 10, which says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, I want to, to give an outline uh, of this text in the book of Matthew. Um, Jesus Christ, he did not come during the uh, period of Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonian kingdom uh, because the Babylonian kingdom, uh, it was a ruthless kingdom. It would come and it would plunder a land and it would take uh, those of royal blood, those who were eloquent, the Daniels, the Shadrach, the uh, uh, Abednego's, and they would take them to, the, to, to Babylon. And the land they would have plundered they would leave uh, those who were weak, those who were poor, and they would be left in, in, in poverty. Uh, he did not come also during the time of the Meds and the Persian kingdom because that kingdom was an unforgiving kingdom. Once a, the king had sealed, it was done. There was no forgiveness. But Jesus comes during the time of the Roman Empire or the Roman kingdom during the time of Caesar. Uh, why? Uh, because the Romans, their kingdom amplified or it showed or it signified what the kingdom of God would come and do. The Romans would come and invade a land. Once they invade a land, they would then take the ideology of Rome and bring it into that nation. They would now take uh, the system of Rome and bring it to that nation. Uh, so now Jesus is speaking to people who are under the captivity of the Romans. He's speaking to people who are under the kingdom of the Romans. When we look at the book of Luke, Luke says it was the disciples who went to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray as John has taught his disciples. But Matthew now, he just starts uh, by presenting it as the Lord teaching on prayer. Now, where we have read, it says, your kingdom come, your will be done. What they would do is after they invade a nation, those who had been conquered, they would send out a message to Caesar and they would say, come now, bring to us your system, bring to us your rulership. So this is what Jesus was saying. He was showing them that the same way we need to call the kingdom of God to come and invade our lives. We need to call the kingdom of God to come and fill our hearts. Baba Guti, uh, in the book, uh, Hidden Treasure in the Kingdom of God, Baba says the kingdom of God is the rulership or the sovereign rulership of God in the hearts of the believers. It's when God begins to rule in your spirit. It's when God begins to rule in your heart. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. It then says, and when asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered and said, the kingdom of God does not come by observation. Neither will they say, see here or see there. For lo, the kingdom of God is within you. It's when he begins to rule in your heart. It's when God begins to take precedence in your heart. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 then, then says, For uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Why uh, righteousness? 
When we go to 21, 21 of the book of Proverbs, it says, he who pursues uh, love, uh, righteousness and love will obtain uh, life, righteousness and honor. But I like the version that says, will obtain life, prosperity and honor. But, but then says, uh, Professor E.H. Guti in the book, uh, uh, the new African apostle, he says that Jesus Christ, he came so that we can have a higher standard of living. When the kingdom comes, when we pursue righteousness, prosperity will come, will be blessed coming in and blessed going out, will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Luke 12, uh, 32 then says, fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom god wants to rule he takes pleasure in ruling in us he takes pleasure in ruling in us he takes pleasure when he has total control of our lives when he has total control in our lives professor e. h guti in the book uh, that he, the Holy Spirit inspired him to write, the new African apostle with church history. He says a lot of people, they are in the church, but they are not in the kingdom of God. They are in the church, but they are not in the kingdom of God. I can relate. I was born in this ministry. I grew up in this ministry. And I can relate to what Baba was saying. I was in the church. I knew the systems of the church. I knew the ways of the church. But I, I, but God was not ruling in my spirit. But God was not ruling in my spirit. Now, when God begins to rule in us, things begin to change. Life begins to change. When God begins to rule in us. Now, each kingdom has a source of power. Each kingdom has a source of power. It can be their economic power. It can be uh, their, their military power. It can be uh, their power, their educational power. Each kingdom has a source of power. So now in the kingdom of God, the source of power is Jesus Christ. He is the source of power in the kingdom of God. Now, I want us to, to read uh, First Peter. Chapter 3, verse 22. First Peter, chapter, uh, uh, first Peter, chapter 3, verse 22. It speaks of Jesus. And it says, having gone up into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. And there is a comma there. And then it says, angels and authorities and powers are subjected to him. I want to say to you that the source of power in the kingdom is Jesus Christ. There is no angelic being. There is no authority. There is no power that is above the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Acts 10, 38, it then says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. How he went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I like the version that says, healing those who were ruled by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus Christ, he came to take us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He came so that the devil cannot have ruler, rulership over you. I was, I was once bound by the devil. I was once bound by addictions. I was once bound by lust. I was once bound, bound by the enemy. But glory be to the Son of God, Jesus Christ. When I allowed him to come into my life, alcohol could not fill the void and the emptiness I felt within me. Drugs could not fill the void and the emptiness that was within me. Laster could not fill the void and the emptiness that was within me. But when I allowed him, when I allowed the power of the kingdom 
to come into my life and to rule. I got free, brothers and sisters. I got free, brothers and sisters, because there is power in the name of Jesus. Hebrews 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the unchangeable changer. He is the source of power in the kingdom of God. He is the source of power in the kingdom of God. And today, that power is available for you. Today, that power is available for you. Oh, I remember one day, it was on a Sunday. Uh, the whole week, we had been having a revival. And I had been speaking about the power in the name of Jesus. And it was on a Sunday, I remember. It was on a Sunday. The usher came, and she said to me, Pastor, there's someone who wants to see you outside. And when I went outside of the auditorium, there was a lady. She was holding her baby wrapped in a blanket. If you see someone holding a baby wrapped in a blanket in summer, and they want to see you, oh, brother, you know you are in trouble. And when I went there, I said to her, what is wrong? She said, my daughter is not feeling well. I said to her, why didn't you take her to the clinic, to the hospital, take her to the doctor? She said, it's Sunday. They are closed. They open later on. But I heard you, pastor. You were speaking about the power in the name of Jesus. You were speaking about the power in the name of Jesus. I said to her, ah, uh, let me hold the baby and pray. When I, when, when I held the baby, the, uh, the baby's eyes had rolled back and the baby was foaming in the mouth. I knew that there was no life. The baby, there was no more life. And fear gripped me. Fear gripped me. And the Holy Spirit reminded me, it's not about you. It's not about you. <laughs> it's about the power in the name of Jesus. It's about the power in the name of Jesus. And I began to pray. And I said, in the name of Jesus, come back to life. In the name of Jesus, come back to life. In the name of Jesus, the baby's eyes rolled back. And she began to cry and cough. And I gave her back to the mother. There is power in that name. I remember on one Easter Sunday, one Easter Sunday, I had been preaching on that Easter about the power in the name of Jesus, about the power in the name of Jesus. And the lady came and she said, Pastor, I have come with my husband. He fell sick about two years ago and the sickness caused him to be blind. Ah, and he said, I heard you say there is power in the name of Jesus. Why don't you pray for my husband, for him to see fear gripped me. And I remembered how our father, Apostle E.H. Guti, how he had prayed for a blind pastor at the Deeper Life Conference, and his eyes were open. And Baba was saying, it is through the power of Jesus. It is through the power of Jesus. I remembered those words, and I began to pray for, the, for, for that man. And I said, in the name of Jesus, blind eyes, be opened. In the name of Jesus, blind eyes, be opened. Ah, I said to him, do you see anything? He said, no. I don't see anything. I said, oh, fear began to grip me. But I felt something <laughs> coming within me. I knew it's not in me. It's in the name of Jesus. And I said, in the name of Jesus, eyes be opened. And his eyes were opened. What am I saying? That power is available for you. That power is accessible to you. That's the power in the kingdom. The name of Jesus, the sovereign king. The name of Jesus, the son of the living God. The name of Jesus is available for you. The name that is above every name. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, 10, and 11. It then says, therefore, God has highly exalted him. And he has given him a name that is above every name. <laughs> that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, on, of things on the earth, of things under the earth. And every tongue confess 
to the uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I want you to know there is no power, there is no authority that is above the name of Jesus. That name is accessible to you. That name is available for you. That name shatters addictions. That name breaks chains. That name changes lives. The name of Jesus. Today, I have something to offer. Today, I have something to offer. I have come to offer you Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. John chapter 3 gives us how we can enter, how we can access this kingdom. John chapter 3 from verse 1. Uh, it speaks and is, uh, about the man, brother Nicodemus. It says, there was a man uh, called, uh, of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews called Nicodemus. He went to Jesus one day by night and he said, Rabbi, we know you are from God. For no man can do the things you are doing unless God is with him. On verse 3, Jesus then said, uh, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See in that text means to horaho. Horaho means to be admitted to witness. Ah, uh, These miracles, these things we've been talking about, if you are not born again, you are not allowed to horaho. You are not allowed <laughs> to witness. It is only when you, are be, when you have been born again. On verse 4, Brother Nicodemus then says, But how can a man be born again? Should I go back into my mother's womb a second time and be born? When a man, he was saying, Look, I'm old. I, there are things in my life that I've done. Some of the things that I regret. Can I go back? into my mother's womb so that I can come back with a clean slate. But Jesus on verse 5 then says, Most assuredly, I say unto you, <laughs> unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Enter in that text means to be allowed to enter or to be ushered into his presence. Uh, I remember before I was born again, I would go to church and people would be raising their hands and they would be worshiping God. People would be crying and I would look and I would stare and I would say, what's wrong with these people? How, how come? Are they pretending? What are they doing? What's going on? Because I had not yet been allowed to enter into his presence. Uh, on, uh, I want to say to you, I want to say to you, I want to say to you, today is your day to be born again, to be born again, to be born again, to be born again. Verse 6, he then says, what is born of spirit, is, what is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. On verse 7, he says, marvel not that I say you must be born again. Ah, today you must be born again. Today. You must surrender your life to the king of the kingdom for you to access the miracles, for you to access the blessing. We were preaching at one place and we were talking about the miracles in the kingdom of God. And we were talking about the experiences that God has been doing in the lives of people. And one man who was there, he invited us over to his house. He said, Pastor, after the service, I am going to come and take you. I want you to come to my house. So we went over to his house. And he said to me, Pastor, all this time, uh, I was thinking that uh, people are paid so that they can come and testify. But you, are all, you have only been here for less than two weeks. And people are testifying about this kingdom. Now, uh, I said this man, he couldn't have paid anyone. Brother, we don't pay people to, to witness. You need to be born again. And I say to him, have you been born again? Have you received Jesus Christ 
as your personal Lord and Savior. And he said, no, and he said, ah, I remember uh, I grew up uh, going to this other church. That's where I was going to fellowship. It was my mother's church. And as I grew, I don't remember receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But at one point, I know that I met my wife. And my wife was coming to uh, Zyodia forward in faith. And she said to me, if you want to marry me in my church, you cannot ask me out like this. You need to come. You go to the elder's house. And uh, you come and they'll give us time and you can propose there. <laughs> and that's how he came. And after they got married, uh, because they were active in the church, they became deacons because they remained being active in the church. Now they were elders. But he was not born again. He could not, he could not be admitted to witness or to see the goodness and the sovereignty and the power of God. And as he was speaking, I felt it in my spirit that this man is not born again. And I say to him, you need to be born again. You need to be born again. You need to be born again. That is how you can access the power. You are in the church, but you now need to come in the kingdom of God. And he said to me, pastor, he said to me, pastor, pastor, ah, what will people say? And I said, it's not a matter of people. It's a matter about your relationship with God. It's a matter about your relationship with God. And I remember that night he knelt down, raised up his hand to heaven, and he received Jesus. Ah, and the next Sunday, I saw him when the MC said, is there anyone who wants to come and testify? He was the first one. And he said, this week has been a week of my miracles. I have been seeing, I have been seeing, I have been experiencing the power of the sovereign God, the power of God. I want to say to you, I want to say to you, if you are not born again, you cannot be able to access the kingdom. If you are not born again, you cannot be able to access the power in the kingdom of God. You cannot be able to access the power that lies in the kingdom of God. It is available to you. That power, my brother, that power, my sister, is available to you. I want to tell you my own testimony. I was an alcoholic. An alcoholic in my teenage years, I was an alcoholic. In the morning, I would wake up to drink whiskey. In the afternoon, I would drink. In the evening, I would drink. I would go for wild parties. But at night, and when I'm by myself, I would cry. Because there was an emptiness that could not be filled by such things. I want to speak to somebody right now that suicide is not the answer. Suicide is not the answer. Suicide is not the answer. I know that there is an emptiness that is within you. There is a longing inside of you, a craving inside of you <laughs> that is saying there is something much better out there. That's saying there is something much better. There is a longing. Professor E.H. Goody in the book, Dissatisfaction Because of Eden, he says that emptiness, it can only be filled by Jesus Christ. And I am a witness to that. That, that emptiness, ooh, it didn't go away. I tried marijuana. It didn't go away. I tried following the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, the pride of life. <laughs> but that emptiness, it didn't go away. There was a void inside of me. I'm talking to you, to somebody who feels that emptiness. It didn't go away. It was there. And do you know what? The devil would remind me and he would call me by my sin. He would say to me, 
you are a drunkard. He would say to me, you are a thug. Huh? He would call me by my sin. But there is a man, the man Jesus Christ. He called me by my name. He did not call me by my sin. I want to say to you, you might be in despair that society is calling you by your sin. That society is labeling you names. But today I've come to address you by your name. I've come to say to you, Jesus Christ, he's calling out for you. Jesus Christ, he's calling out for you. Jesus Christ, he's calling out for you. Just as you are, come to him. Just as you are, come to him. He will cleanse you. He will wash you by his blood. Jesus Christ, come as you are. I want to take you to the book of Job. Chapter 3 again, from verse 14, going downwards, he says, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That whosoever, uh, verse 15 then says, That whosoever believes in him should not perish. Verse 16 then says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 then says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. I want to say to you, Jesus Christ is not there to condemn you. Jesus Christ is not there to condemn you. Jesus Christ, he is there to save you. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 10, verse 10, it then says, The thief comes but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come. Other version says, but I am. <laughs> I am come that you might have life. And have it in abundance. He came that you might have life. What is life? Life is living out your purpose. Life is living out your purpose. We see that in the book of Corinthians. It says, for no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind perceived the good things that God has in store for those who love him. And it is through his spirit that these things are revealed to us. I want to say, life is living out your purpose. Life is living out your purpose on this earth. It's for you to find fulfillment. But it can only be done when you are in Jesus Christ. It can only be done when you are in Jesus Christ. I know the pain is there. I know the heartache is there. I know. But I want to say to you, call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. I want to say to that mother who is about to give up on her daughter. She's hooked to drugs. She's hooked to alcohol. And you have been praying. And you have been saying, is there an answer for me? I want to say to you, call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. You know, the name of Jesus, if you just say it lightly, it's like a piece of paper. It's light as a piece of paper. But when you mix it with faith, when you mix it with faith, it becomes a hammer that shatters things. It becomes a hammer that breaks and crashes down the walls. The name of Jesus, use it by faith. 21, 21 of the book of Matthew. Jesus then says, and if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what was done to this fig tree, but you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and it will obey you. Faith. Use the name of Jesus with faith. Pray for your husband using the name of Jesus by faith. Pray for your breakthrough using the name of Jesus by faith. But for you to have access to that name, I want to give you Jesus today. I have come with something to offer. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. The sweetest name I know, Jesus, the way maker. Jesus, the way maker. He will make a way for you. 
way, there's no way. He will give you life. He will give you restoration. He will come to you and he will embrace you just as you are. Someone might be saying, Pastor, just as I am. Yes, just as you are. And I want to say the Lord's prayer with you. You can follow the words after me and you say the Lord's prayer. When we say the Lord's prayer, we are accepting him. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, <laughs> then you'll be saved. So I want you to follow these words after me. Wherever you are, wherever you are, in your living room, you might be at work, you might be uh, at your church in the, in, the, in the auditorium, wherever you are watching me, yes, 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 you can receive him right now. You can receive him right now. I want you to follow these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I believe and I know I am a sinner. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I open my heart. Come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You came on the earth and you died for my sins. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, thank you for making me a child of God. I thank you in your mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Brothers and sisters, the Bible says when one sinner gives their lives to Jesus, the angels, they rejoice in heaven. I rejoice with you today for the decision that you have made. Now, there's a number appearing on your screen. You can call that number for your, for your nearest church. Uh, we want you to come uh, for our Sunday services. We want you to come uh, for our Bible studies. Uh, call that number and they'll give you the nearest uh, forward in faith location that is near to you. Uh, may the God of Ezekiel bless you. May he continue to keep you and may, he, may his favor and his light shine upon you. Thank you. Amen.